Monday! Welcome to part four of the Gypsy Satchel. Um, this week I am going to show you how to do the knit and the crochet flowers and leaves that we're going to use to adorn our bag further. Um, and today I am so excited because I'm going to meet some of our local fellow Gypsy Stitchers over at a brewery called Grandma's House on Broadway, downtown Denver. Um, it is such a fun place because they play board games and play bingo and they stitch all in a setting that looks like a grandma's house. So I'm super excited to go there again and meet these girls. Um, these girls I've known since I had my store, so we've been stitching together a long time. I'll be sure to take lots of pictures and video and share them with you in our next lesson um, in part five so I can share that time with you guys. So yeah, I'm super excited to, to see everybody and to stitch with everybody. It's going to be great. And with beer. Woo! But before I go drinking with the girls, I guess I better show you some of these textural elements to add to our bag. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is use up the rest of this yarn that we did for the bag. In addition to that, what you're going to need is um, thread E, which is a Pearl 8 cotton. And then grab your B and C bag and we're going to use those other size 6 seed beads. So these little flowers are really simple. Just a little magic ring, pop your hook in and grab that yarn. Maintain your circle, gently take your hand out. And then chain one to lock that in place. So we're going to be working around both the tail and the loop here. Okay, so we're going to chain two and keep these loose. There's no reason to keep them real tight. And that's going to count as the first double crochet. And we're going to single crochet. Okay, and then the pattern is really simple. It is just alternating between double crochet and single crochet four times. So no chaining or anything, directly from that single, yarn over, we're going to work a double, go into the circle, okay, you have three loops on there, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, and then immediately work a single. Okay, you want your crochet to be firm, but not, not really loose, not really crazy tight. Okay, and then a double. And then a single. Single. And you can push these stitches down to give yourself more room if you're running out of where they join here. Single. Okay, once you have that, make sure you have the 10 stitches on top. So just look at bird's eye view. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, pull the string so that your work ends up in a circle, and you're just going to slip stitch to join in the top of that double crochet. That's it for this flower. So what you want to do then is cut yourself a tail for six inches and pull it through. Now when I finished these flowers, I really kind of liked the other side better. So reach up from the back side and just pull that yarn through and pull it tight. And then you've got these little flowers. And these flowers measure about three quarters of an inch. You know, if yours are a little bigger, smaller, it's not really a big deal. From here, we're going to attach this to the bag, and I'll show you what we're going to do. Now, all of these elements that we're making today, we're going to wait to attach them all until um, we've got them all done, and until next week when we actually work needle turn applique directly on the bag. But I will attach a couple of them. It's going to be so much fun to get them on there. I know you're probably dying to, to get all the elements on there to make it so textury and so pretty. Okay, so as far as to weave these ends in, take the one from the middle and just on the back go through that circle again. And that way you can just kind of pull it a little bit tighter. Just once around is good. 
Take your outer tail and pop it on your needle. Let's just get one of these sewn on for now. Pick anywhere on your bag, it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, okay, I'm gonna place that right there. That looks good. What you wanna do now is just pick up a few stitches of the background of your bag and then go in through each stitch. You can choose to pick up the whole stitch, but I like that definition. I like that sort of edge. So what I'm doing is I'm just going in the bird's eye view in that B of that stitch, if you can see that. All right, and then directly across, pick up a few stitches and then come into the next one. Okay, can you see that? Into the next one and do that all the way around your bag. Okay, and then as always, just when you're done, weave the tail through the bag stitches. And just be really careful here when you clip this off. Okay, so now we've got some great dimension here with these flowers. What you want to do this time is thread your size 8 pearl cotton E and then as always I go in through a big hole and then just come up through the center. So what I'm trying to do here is just define the petals. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the bigger petals, the ones where we did double crochet, I'm just sort of pinching those out so I'm kind of so I know where to go. And then with this floss in the divot in where we did the single crochet, we're just going to make three little tight lines here just to squeeze those little um, divots in between the petals in. That's three. And then just go on to the next one. Do this all the way around till all five of your petals are defined. And then when you're done with those, just go ahead and pop a size six seed bead on there and then down into the bag to hold that one. And those are just, you can kind of push them, push the bead down into there till it sinks in. You can go through it again if you want to and then tie this off. And then you just got these sweet little matching flowers. You wanna leave a little bit left of this, I'd say maybe five yards or so to make the tassel, which we'll do in the last week. So, you know, make eight, maybe 10. It just depends on how much yarn you have left over. Um, I know if your bag is coming out a little bit bigger, then you're probably using more yarn than I did. You are certainly welcome to use something different that coordinates from your own stash. Um, and same with the tassel as well. You can use something different. We're going to use two yarns for the tassel. So again, I would say just make, you know, like make the number of flowers that you want to make and then set them aside for now. Okay, let's get to some knitting. Um, grab your yarn E, which I recommended kind of a, a heavier sock yarn. Um, this is the whitish wedding kit. So I'm doing this yarn called Seduce. It's just kind of a cool um, sort of a linen-y type of yarn. So anything that you can knit on a size three needle. We're going to start with the buds and this is such an easy pattern. All you're going to do is cast on four. Now if you've never knit before I do have some knitting videos that I've done previously but those of you who are versed in knitting cast on four stitches I use a cable cast on for just about everything into the slip knot and twist it on. Okay, 
and we're going to increase in each of these stitches. But to, to be able to do that easier, we're going to purl the first row. So purling is coming from behind and your yarn is in the front. And put counterclockwise one, two, and I'm on double pointed needles here, but that's not essential. I'm just they're nice and short and compact and little, so I use them quite a bit for these little pieces. But if you have straight needles, circular, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then to increase in each one. Knit into the front. Oops, let's get that tail out of there. Knit into the front. Don't take it off the needle. Swing it around and knit into the back of the stitch. So from one stitch, you'll have two. One, and do that all the way across. That will give you eight. So every other row, we're going to just purl it back. Okay, so purl this row. Okay, so every row now, you're going to decrease at the beginning and the end and knit the ones in the middle. So knit two together. So you're going to go into two stitches in the front, knit until you have two stitches left on your needle, now you should have six, pull that back. The next knit row, we're going to go from six to four, knit two together, knit two, knit two together, pull that back. Knit two together. Knit two together. And then we're just going to bind this stitch up. We're not even going to bother to purl this row back. Just bind that off. Lift up your loop. Clip it and then bring that yarn that you just clipped through the loop and tighten. And you just let it be just a little bud that when we sew it onto the bag, we'll shape it. And I'll show you how to do that one once we knit the flowers out of this yarn. Okay, so make, I'd say make four or five of these and then use the rest of yarn E to make the knitted flowers that I'm going to show you next. These buds will measure about an inch, inch and a quarter, you know, somewhere in there, somewhere close. This is ultimately what the cabbage rose is going to look like when we're done knitting them. And we're going to turn it, spiral it up, and these will measure about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. All right, so to start these cabbage roses, you're going to cast on seven. I'm still on the size three, US three knitting needle. And these you can vary in size. You can cast on seven eight or nine here, I'd say. Most of them I just did seven. Okay, I have my seven. Purl the first row. Okay, and then we want to increase in every single stitch. So we're going to go from 7 to 14, or 8 to 16, whatever it is that you decided to cast on. And then to increase, we're going to knit into the front and knit into the back. 
two stitches from one. Knit into the front, knit into the back. Okay, so this is 13 and 14, and then purl this row back. All right, and as you can imagine, we are going to double these stitches. So we're going to go from 14 to 28, doing the same thing, increase front and back. All right, now I've got 28 stitches on here, and I'm going to purl it back and bind off. And I need a little refresher on binding off. Knit two stitches, just like normal. And then leapfrog the back one over the stitch and off the needle, keeping that second one on. Now, from now on, you just knit one and leapfrog. Knit one, leapfrog. Okay, last stitch, knit it, and leapfrog. Lift up on the loop, give yourself a six inch tail, and pull this through. Now you've got this sort of curly shape that we're going to take one of the tails and make that a little rose. I'm going to show you how to do that next. So the cast on tail, the one in the center, I put on a needle and I'm just going to very haphazardly make this into a little round flower. Now, if you're using regular yarn, sock yard, you should have no problems going through the fibers of the yarn. This yarn's a little funky because it's it's very linen-y and it's thick. So I'm gonna try not to stab the actual fibers of the yarn. And I'm just gonna go into this actual stitches. And sew this together. So really what I'm doing is I'm just curling this around and making very easy, quick little stitches just to get it in place. Because when we sew it on the bag, of course, we'll be able to shape it even further. But we wanna just make sure that we can get it into the round first. Each one will be a completely different shape. At least that's my experience. And then while I have this stitch on the needle, Let's go ahead and attach one of these just so I can show you. These are pretty heavy, large roses, so I'm keeping them kind of towards the bottom. I'm not going to put any of these big guys up here. I really want the weight to come down. So sort of the more delicate things we're putting up at the top, the bigger things we're kind of keeping down towards the bottom. So right here, I'm just going to... Stab it into the yarn. And again, this yarn is very wiry. It's hard if I come through a stitch, it's going to be really hard to stitch in there. So I'm just going to pop that in there, tuck it towards the back, and hold that in place while I take the other tail and stitch it on. Okay, thread that needle. And then just start sort of shaping the flower while you stitch it onto the bag. So I'm going to go behind it, maybe come up through the middle again. Since I want this to stick out, I might come through and just sort of move it over a little bit. Now in this yarn, I'm going to sort of focus on coming out of these holes of the crochet rather than into the actual threads themselves. 
rather than this is a really obvious yarn so if I were to wrap it over and grab it I'm it, it would be obvious I'm not going to do that I'm going to stick it right back in kind of close to where I'm coming in and then don't be afraid to manipulate it and get that sewn on Again, rather than sew all the elements on, mostly we're going to do this next week. But if you're just dying to get some on, I wanted to just show you real quick how to do it. And don't be afraid to, you know, to pinch this in. This doesn't have to stay around. You know, flowers get all floppy and stuff. So we're just trying to mimic nature, the beautiful glory of organic nature. So there's really no right or wrong. You're just getting some texture on here. You're making flowers. And, and like I said, everyone is going to come out different, which is awesome. After you do the four or five buds, you'll have enough yarn left over to maybe make six flowers somewhere in there. If you get to the end of a flower and you don't have enough to bind off, like I thought maybe I would have enough, but I wasn't sure. No worries, all is not lost. What you're gonna do is just take and bind off or finish off the flower, no matter where you are, with the rest of a different yarn, right? So rather than wrap with the old yarn, I'm gonna take the, the mohair, which is what I'm gonna knit with next. And so this rose will have an extra little bit of fun texture so that's not a big deal at all and in a, in a project like this where we're using scraps and we're just kind of um, designing as we go and, and making so much texture you can relax a little bit on amounts you know you may if you've crocheted your bag a little looser you might have run out of um, yarn faster than I did you might not have enough for those flowers and so you might have to use something different and I always like to call that the Bob Ross moment you know the design opportunity you may not have thought of something really spectacular to do had you not run out of the materials in the first place. So in a project like this, we can be really loose um, with it. So just an idea there. And I will use those yarns to sew this up and sew it to the bag. Right? So kind of pretty. Maybe all your flowers can be bound off with the Angora yarn. Or some of them half of them you can certainly do that in fact the next thing we're gonna do is the same exact pattern the same thing that you did repeat it with your mohair your your kid mohair that I put in the kit um, I love kids silk haze for this in whitish wedding I'm using something a little heavier because I wanted some angora flowers I thought that would be really pretty with the white um, so the same thing cast on you know anywhere from six to nine stitches and purl the first row, increase every stitch, purl the next row, increase every stitch, purl, and then bind off. And go on a smaller needle so that the flower is a little smaller. I won't even worry about demonstrating because it's the same thing that I just did. We're just doing a different material. And on these flowers, I've made a couple of them already. You can make them just as they are with your mohair. Or some of them you can take thread E, which is that size 8 pearl cotton that we use to wrap the crochet flowers on, and bind off with those. So have fun with it. You know, use materials from home. This is a great bag where you could put buttons or brooches or all kinds of different things on it. So, um, so just relax with the materials that you have, and there's always something really fun to be done um, as you are inspired, as you're working the bag. Okay, and I'll just sew one of these on just to show you. There's really no rhyme or reason where you put things. I just sort of, you know, that looks good to me. I don't know, no rhyme or reason. Just, just trust your gut and trust your eye and you can place things anywhere you want to. So I've already gone and taken my little rose that I had bound off with the, um, eight floss and I'm just using the tails to weave these in and I'm going to run out of tail before I get to smush it all in there so I'll just grab another piece of yarn but you know you can even take if you wanted to fold that center in more 
Just take and come up through it. It's really easy to manipulate and kind of fun the way you can get these flowers to actually look like little flowers on there. Okay, and then of course every time you're done with the thread, weave it through the fibers. Pull it and clip it. You know, and here we've got this little bud. Maybe I'll put him a little bit higher. Just put him up there. Kind of echo the way that this stem is moving. And this too, you can just manipulate as you stitch it on. You can manipulate how wide he is, how fat he is, skinny, short, whatever. Um, and this is the fun part. And I know I said we're going to put the majority of these on next week after our needle turn applique. But I did want to show you just in case you wanted to get a few on. And I will be going through this again in the next video as we begin placing all the elements that we make this week. So we're going to make these little spirals that sort of fit in between and we kind of hug all the little elements, which are really fun. This is yarn F. It is a very thin cotton, like a sock yarn weight cotton. Of course, you can use anything, but if you've got a kit, it's yarn F. Okay, to start the spiral, you're just going to chain, oh, let's start with seven. And I recommend anywhere between seven and 10, even go up to 12, 13 for some of them, because you want some of them small and some of them big. Um, what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what you're gonna do is put three stitches in each one. So you wanna keep this chain pretty loose. So to start, not in the chain you're coming from, but in the next one. I'm going to work three single crochets. And here it really doesn't matter what stitch you use. I think I tried to stay with the same kind of stitch within each chain. And you know, maybe the spiral gets taller, so in the next one we'll do three singles. Now, scoot your work way over towards the end because the next chain will really be hiding and tucked under all this work that you did. So you want to scooch, scooch your work back so you can find that next chain to go into. Typically when I go into a chain, in this V here, I just go into the bottom stitch so that I have one on the bottom and two on the top. So I'll work three more single crochets. And this is the same concept as the cabbage rows that we just did, where you're increasing so aggressively in each stitch that the work can't help but to spiral. So that's all we're doing here. Okay, so the next one, maybe I'll work three half double crochets, really pulling my work over. Plus that helps it to spiral a little bit too. And see how that it's buried right underneath there. If it gets really bad, just work two stitches instead of three. And then in the next one, you can do three. Let's see if I can even get in there. Another good reason to keep your chain pretty loose. Once you go in the first time, it's easier to find the second time, of course. I think I'll just work two in here because this is getting tight. I probably could have done my chain a little looser. that work back and then I'll do three doubles maybe in the next one. So you get the idea. You can switch it up. You can do all singles, all doubles. You can vary it. Go up and down within each spiral. And when you're done, you'll have a little pile of spirals that look like this. And you should be able to make, gosh, 10, 12, even 15 spirals with the, with the yarn that I suggested um, and that I gave you in the kit. When you stitch it onto the bag, the work will kind of spiral and you can mold it to the piece. So for example, let's do this one. Let's just put one on as we've been doing. 
take your longest tail, that way you don't have to switch. The other one you can just weave in if this is long enough to go all the way around. So at your end. And then let's say I'm just going to do a little spiral oh, right here on this rose. And you see how you can just kind of tuck that in. And then stitch it to the background. But you can also stitch it to the piece too. Pick up some of that rose so that it lays on top of there. Then pick up the background, then go through the spine of the spiral. You know, you could even twist it and just have it go this way. It's really fun and really freeing to be able to just mold it how you want to or tuck it under. Maybe I'll do that. That's kind of pretty. Right? And then just keep stitching it on until it's the dimension and the size you want. Okay, and then make a bunch of those and set those aside or stitch them on if you just can't help it. And then as always, weave in the end through the work, pull it through, and clip it. And then this little guy, you can use him, you can just weave this in, or use it to maybe tack down a few of these so this lays flat. Or you can just leave it flopping over. It's whatever you want. Whatever, however you like it, it's totally fine. I might just pin him down a little bit right there. Okay, the last little element that we're going to do this week are these little leaves. They're crocheted leaves with a vine coming down. Okay, use yarn C, and you should be able to make, oh, like I said, probably 8 to 10. You can kind of get the theme here. We're making just as much as we can with the yarn that we have. Oh, and incidentally, on the one that you did the spirals with, leave maybe five yards because we are going to embroider a little bit with that at the end just to fill in some branches and things. Okay, so for these leaves you're going to chain on 12. I'm going to use a size one steel hook or one and a half, whatever you have. These leaves measure oh about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. So chain 12, 12, and then I know normally I say in crochet to go into the bottom of the chain with the two threads on top, but since we want that vine coming down the center, what we're going to do instead is give our chain a little quarter twist, and on the back you can see the loops. Don't go into the first loop one right before your chain because it's too hard to get into. Go into the second one and work a slip stitch. And we're going to get a little height as we go down this row. So we're going to work one slip stitch, two single crochets, and this is in each chain. We're not doing any increasing yet. Two half double crochets, two double crochets. Okay, and then a double crochet increase. So we're going to put two double crochets in one loop back here. Okay. And your yarn may split. This is a silk or a cotton blend. I recommend it. Of course, you can use anything you have. I just like to recommend different sheens. I like the juxtaposition of the mats and the sheens and how they all blend together. In the next one, we're going to do two half double crochets, increase, and 
and then we reach up two stitches left and do a single crochet and a slip stitch. Okay, and then rather than turn it around, we're gonna go up the other side. So just flip that tail over your work, get him out of the way. And you can already see the stem. So on the other side, what you're gonna do is skip the first stitch, work a single crochet into the next stitch, but don't go in like you normally would here. You wanna take your hook and go into the V And work your stitch. Okay, and then work another single crochet right next to it down into the V. Be careful here, don't split your stitch. Make sure you're you're digging right down deep into that V. Alright, and then two half double crochets, not an increase, just the stitch. Then one double crochet. A double crochet increase, just one. One increase, meaning going to two double crochets in that same loop. A half double. In the next stitch, not an increase this time, just one half double, a single, and then a slip stitch. And I actually like to close it off. You'll have this kind of loop stitch over here. Actually go into that just to make the leaf a little pointier. Put it in as best you can. And then just work a slip stitch to close it off and make a pointy leaf. Clip the end, pull it through. All right, and then when you stitch your leaves on, it's just the same kind of thing. You can just you know try to find places where you don't have a whole bunch of work that you've done already. Right, or he, this leaf can even be pointing down here like this and stitch that on. And like I said, if you just can't help yourself, go ahead and stitch them on. You know, maybe stitch most of them on and leave two of each one that you can pop in later. Um, but remember, we are going to be doing next week needle turn applique and we're going to embroider on those. So those will actually add quite a bit of texture and color. So. Um, if you are going to put all these elements on this week, that's fine. Just make sure you're leaving, you know, spots that are bigger than this leaf, actually. And it's fine, obviously, if we run over. Just make sure you're, you're leaving a place for those. And I think we're going to do just five or six of those. Next week will be great. We will get those applique leaves on there and embroider on those. So that's that other little piece of fabric that's in your kit that looks like linen. It might be a shot cotton. Grab that out and we'll take that and some embroidery flosses and a few beads and make this bag even more spectacular. Thank you so much for joining me for the Gypsy Satchel uh, part four. I'm off to Grandma's House Brewery to meet with the Denver local Gypsy Stitchers. So we will see you next week. Have a wonderful week and happy stitching.